Hi, I'm Rachel, and I want to help demystify living off campus at the University of Virginia. As an out-of-state student myself, I know just how tricky it can be to find the right spot to live when you don't know anything about the campus or the surrounding area, and so that's what I'm hoping I can help you out with today. If you were to Google the University of Virginia in Google Maps, this is what you would see output. You would see a point marking University of Virginia that's sort of in the middle of grounds. It's not on the rotunda or on a classroom. It's just sort of in the middle. So now I want to overlay what the entirety of grounds is. So this orange region outlined in blue is every classroom, stadium, and area considered part of the University of Virginia. When taking a closer look at this region, we can see that the rotunda is right here. And looking further south, you'll see one of the two stadiums marked here and here. Um, and then classes and academic buildings are spread all throughout. So now if we were to focus just on UVA's School of Data Science's new data science building marked by this star, we would see that this is in a pretty central location on grounds. But it's not exactly central when you consider where the majority of houses are. All of these red dots are places that, according to the University of Virginia's off-campus housing site, are available for the coming fall. You'll notice that they seem to be clumped and scattered in specific regions, so I'm going to try and explain what each of these different areas mean. The area that I'm outlining on the screen right now is called the corner. This is a very social area filled with restaurants and bars and a couple shops. And so this is definitely the place to go if you want to grab a Bodo's bagel or a late night dinner or a drink, uh, or maybe do a little shopping with your friends. This is usually known as the undergrad hotspot. A lot of people hang out here at all times of day and night. And so all of these locations are both really close to class and very close to the corner where you can partake in good food and social activities. Over to the east is the downtown mall. This is where more of the grad students tend to go when they're in the mood for some good food, drinks, and activities. Um, it tends to be less crowded and a lot less populated with undergrads, so a lot of grad students will gravitate toward living in more of this area. And lastly, this cluster of houses down the south is a fairly close walk to class, but it tends to be a bit further from the corner and the downtown mall, so it can be a bit less of a social area. To give a sense of scale, a 10 minute walk to the University of Virginia State of Science building would probably be encompassed by this area. If you are willing to walk roughly 20 minutes, then we could expand this border to include all of these regions as well. Now, this is just for walking. Um, anywhere further than this, I would suggest taking either public transit via the buses or potentially driving and getting a parking pass. So ideally, if you can, try to live within this 20-minute walking circle. Um, but if you're outside of that region, then don't worry. The bus systems run and there are plenty of parking spaces if you're interested in getting a parking pass. So now that we've talked about where to live, let's talk about how to actually land one of these locations. I'm gonna segue over to the website that is sent to you once you become an admitted student. So here we are on the UVA off-ground housing website, and it has a lot of great features. On the left-hand side of the screen, you will see um, a movable map that you can look at all the different points in real time that in theory are available. When you hover over one, it'll tell you how many bedrooms it is, the price, and how far it is from the University of Virginia. This is calculating based on the border that you can see outlined in gray. If you went into the tab that says more, you can choose a lot of different features. For instance, how much you're willing to pay, how many bedrooms you would like your space to ideally have. And as you select new options, the map on the left automatically updates. Um, one of the important features is the move in between range. Ideally, you're going to want to choose to move in between May and June because that is when our program starts. So that's a very important one to look at. You may also want a dishwasher or laundry features, all sorts of things. Once you've changed the features to your specifications, you can look around at all of the places available. 
I might choose to look in the ash tree apartments, which I know for a fact are very nice. This will take you to a web page that shows images of the space, all the units that they have available, and when they become available, how many bedrooms there are, what you'll be paying in rent, and all sorts of other things. As you scroll down, you'll see the terms of the lease, who it's convenient for, what expenses are included or not, um, and all sorts of extra amenities, like whether there's a laundry facility or if it's near a bus stop. Another great feature is it shows the distance and a walking path from your building to the center of campus. Next, it'll also show you how far you are from the different shopping centers or parks nearby, which I think is really convenient. Um, and as you scroll further, you'll even see um, how bikeable or how loud the area is, which is a really useful tool. There usually comes with a lot of images. Um, Ash Tree has a lot of different units, so the images are expansive. And once you get to the very bottom of the screen, on the right hand side, you'll be able to see send a message or a phone number that you can call. This is an important thing to note. Do not send a message and hope that that will get you your apartment. What they will tell you is to instead go to their personal website or call their personal phone number for any um, apartment or housing complex. And through there, you're meant to find the unit you want and there will be an actual space to apply for that apartment. This is something that tripped me up a whole lot and I hope you don't make my same mistake. Although the housing website shows a whole lot of wonderful places and says they're all available, you don't really know if they're available until you go to that place's direct website instead. Um, and so that is really important to keep in mind. Do not trust everything on this website. Make sure you call each place individually if that's where you think you might want to live. So there you have it. That is all my advice for how to find the best spot to live based on your preferences. And I hope you put it to good use when you become part of UVA's data science family. Thanks.